Today on Applied Science, I'm going to talk about high-speed cameras and this interesting motion control rig that I built. This is the Kronos 1.4 camera, which is brand new and just launched on Kickstarter. And what's interesting is that it's a wireless high-speed camera. So it's still running and I can swing it around on this motion control rig and put something interesting at the point of rotation in the center here and capture sort of a matrix-esque bullet time effect. So uh, let's take a few minutes and look at some footage that I collected, and then after that we'll get into the details and the challenges I faced in building this. Pretty cool, right? This camera is actually pushing the state of the art forward in a lot of ways, uh, one of which is price. So if you've seen uh, really popular high-speed camera video channels on YouTube, those cameras can cost like $100,000 or more. And so the price of this is actually what it costs to rent one of those high-end cameras. And in addition, this is completely battery powered. You can just put this in your backpack and go somewhere. And it's also um, highly featured. I mean, it has an external trigger and all kinds of other stuff. I'll put a link in the description to some better, like, full-on product reviews. I'm mostly going to talk about how I used this uh, to get the shots that, I, that you just saw. Let's talk about the mounting for the rotation platform first. As you can see, the steel pipe is connected to the ceiling joists there, and the microphone stand in the middle is just uh, along for the ride. I'm not using it right now. And I welded the steel pipe to a steel plate here and then used these guy wires to support the other ends of it. So it's actually a pretty good mounting solution. And the reason I did it this way is so that I could put all of the stuff that I'm going to need, lighting and all of the setup for the high speed scene on the table, and there wouldn't be anything to get in the way. So I can put my hands through here and there's no like supports or side rails or anything that would get in the way. In addition, I can crank this tabletop up and down so I can position the thing pretty easily just by cranking the table up and down. The motor is a USB configurable and controllable servo motor made by a company called Technic. And it's a, quite an interesting little device. Uh, this is actually about a thousand watts peak power in this tiny little package here, and there is no other controller. This just goes to a DC supply, and everything is done over the USB link, or, or it has an auxiliary jack. 
The reason that this is uh, useful in this project is I can select any speed I want from you know one RPM all the way up to 4,000, and um, I can control it very. I can control the acceleration and deceleration rates very smoothly, so that this thing doesn't uh, try to rip itself apart. The camera with the lens weighs about a kilo and a half, so this thing actually has quite a lot of rotational inertia, and um, it's heavy enough where balance, of course, was a big problem. So I've got a kilo and a half of steel on this side to balance the rotor. And interestingly, I, I was expecting this to have problems. I'm spinning it at about 100 RPM for most of these shots, and I was expecting imbalance to be a big issue, and then I was gonna have to, you know, maybe use little washers and stuff and stack them up to get the balance just perfect. But it actually ended up not being uh, much of an issue. And the other reason that I used a counterweight like that is to get it dynamically balanced. So besides being um, stationary, if you tip this on its side, static balance means that the thing won't uh, go side to side because the rotor has the same weight on either side of the axle. But you also also have to worry about dynamic imbalance. So if the 1.5 kilo center of mass is down here for the camera, but it's up here for the counterweight, then when the thing gets spinning, it's gonna have unequal forces as it spins. And so I was hoping that this would even be the same. And, and as it turns out, this thing is pretty good. If you've used high-speed cameras, you'll know that the way they work is you start them recording, and then you, uh, you know, leave them recording for quite a while. I've got the red light on and your event will take place and then you hit stop. And so it's, it sort of records the previous five or 10 seconds of video footage. And so what you need to be able to do is press the stop button after the action has happened. Of course, if this thing is whipping around at 100 RPM, I can't really get to the button. So the solution that I have for that is to start it recording, get it spinning around, and then I have this wireless um, trigger uh, shutter release that I got on Amazon. This is like a 20 or $30 product. So when I press the button on the remote, uh, we can see we're no longer recording here and it saved the last five or 10 seconds of video. Um, conveniently, the Kronos has an external trigger input that's very configurable. So I, I just Velcroed on the receiver, this wireless thing and hooked this up. So that way I can stop the action while the thing is still spinning and then slowly spin it down controllably and uh, I'll have my footage. Let's talk about lenses for just a sec. Um, I think the standard lens that comes with the Kronos is this uh, zoom lens C-mount, and it actually has quite a zoom range. It goes from 12 and a half millimeter up to 75, which is the biggest zoom range that I've seen for a C-mount lens. It's a little heavy though, and so for this motion capture rig, I was concerned that it might be um, a little too much. This whole thing is kind of it, was, it actually worked out pretty well, but I was worried that weight was going to be an, a big issue. So I got this 25 millimeter lens, which is a very convenient, inexpensive size for C-mount, and then also got a, a 12 and a half millimeter. So here's what this thing looks like in action. The first step is to set up the scene, and when everything is ready, I'll turn around and use the laptop to start up the motor and I have it set to a very low acceleration rate just because there's no reason to, um, to go faster. It's kind of nice to have everything controlled. And once the motor is up to speed, I'll kind of carefully get my head next to it so that I can reach in and trigger the scene and um, you know switch the light on if I need to or not. And at the same time, I'm pressing that wireless remote control so that I uh, capture the video at just the right time. After the motor slows down, I can look at the playback on the back of the camera and decide if that was a good shot or not. And if it is, you can do uh, mark in and mark out points on the five or 10 seconds of real time footage that I captured and then save it as an MP4 to the, um, to the SD card. For lighting really small objects, I found out that these um, little Ikea lamps that I like for everything um, are okay. It, they're, not, they're not super bright, but for doing really small objects, you can get the light source really close to it, and that tends to work out just fine. For bigger objects, I'm using a 650-watt halogen light, and um, it's a little bit of a problem because it's so hot, of course. So much of the energy that comes off is heat. Um, you should check out the creator of uh, this uh, Kronos 1.4 camera. David Kronstein has actually built the largest LED lamp, I guess, in history, or at least in the history of high-speed video. And uh, he has a pretty cool write-up on that. 
So for next time, I also have this linear actuator that I got on eBay, and this is a belt drive, not a lead screw type, so that if I turn the input shaft, you actually get quite a lot of movement on the carriage there. And uh, what I'm going to do is connect that servo motor to the input here, and then control it from the servo control program there. And of course, I'm going to mount the high-speed camera on this so I can, you know, rack it along really fast in a prescribed fashion. Maybe even tip this thing vertically so that I can pour water and stuff and let gravity accelerate it. And then have the camera, you know, chase it down or even, you know, go faster than gravity or all kinds of stuff. But that's going to be pretty good. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.